very pleased to welcome Alex Cruz of British Airways to speak here at the Wings Club today. He is Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, as I previously mentioned, of BA. And as you know, of course, BA is one of the world's leading airlines. They are the UK's largest international scheduled airline, flying to more than 400 destinations worldwide. Alex has served in a number of leadership positions in our industry during his career. He began with American Airlines, working at Sabre, its travel technology arm. He later joined Accenture as head of its aviation practice. In 2006, Alex founded Click Air in Barcelona. Click Air merged with Vueling Airlines, and Alex then became chairman and CEO of the combined entity. With IAG's acquisition of Welling in 2013, Alex joined the IAG Management Committee. He was appointed chairman and CEO of BA earlier this year. Alex is a visiting lecturer at the IESE Business School in Madrid and the ESADE Business and Law School in Barcelona. And he just told me that he's, up till his appointment at BA, he had been commuting from London to Spain for the last 10 years. So he and his family are delighted to be in one place uh, all the time. And we're delighted to have him here today. Please join me in welcoming Alex Cruz. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So let me begin by thanking the Wings Club for giving me the opportunity to come and address you uh, here. Uh, var uh, various of my British Airways predecessors have had this privilege uh, over the years. But I'm pretty sure, I can safely say that I'm the first one to address you with uh, Spanish, American, something accent of some sort. Um, now, I realize I'm also the first speaker here at the Wings Club after, your, after the, res the recent news in the U.S. It's uh, really a very special time to, to, to be here in the U.S. It really has been unbelievable. Um, very, very few of us were really expecting it. Uh, I mean, who would have really thought about it? Uh, Warren Buffett investing in airlines. I mean, it's really amazing. <laughs> that's, that's what you were thinking. Now, the U.S. is not near for me. In fact, I was thinking about it. It was the second week of August in 1984 that uh, with a backpack and two bags, I flew from Panama City to Miami to Chicago. Um, uh, there were storms, so I had to overnight. Didn't know what I meant. I had a huge Hilton room for myself. And then the next morning, I flew to Lansing before going to school in Michigan. I left 11 years later on seat 2A on uh, American Airlines DC-10. Uh, going to London, MD-11, uh, sorry. So I'm not new to the U.S. It's been a long history and I've obviously very linked to the U.S. during this whole time. So it is very pleasing for me to just be working for a company that has such strong ties to the U.S. and it's very uh, rewarding to be with many of you uh, from past times here today. BA has been a very long established uh, company here in, in the U.S. And uh, I am the first CEO that stands here operating to the U.S. and to, to the New York from three airports, from Heathrow, from Gatwick, and from London City. The Gatwick group is very much in line with our new five-year strategy, which I will come on to a little bit later. And obviously, we're not exempt in the U.K. from political turmoil and economic uncertainty. So, we commiserate with you if you've got doubts in those departments because we're also going through interesting times and we've got our own aviation issues that we're going through at the moment, call it uh, Heathrow and in general the aviation agenda in the UK. Now, I've been at the helm of BA for just a little bit uh, over 200 days now and it really has been fascinating to see how this world-renowned airline is from the inside. There are huge amounts of pride there is a tremendous amount of passion, a tremendous amount of experience amongst our colleagues. And yet, like many legacy carriers, we have really big competitive issues that we need to confront. There is a lot of opportunity for us to become a significantly better company. My 200 days have been very busy. We've launched no fewer than 20 new routes and announced a further 14 for next year. We've grown the collaborative uh, elements of our global network. We launched the joint business agreement with Qatar Airways last month in a partnership with China Eastern. We've taken delivery of eight 787-900s, which means we'll have 24 Dreamliners in the fleet by the end of this year. And we took in the last 
of our 12 uh, A380s. We've also completed the refurbishment of 18 747-400s, and at this moment we remain the world's biggest operator of this iconic uh, aircraft, and uh, an aircraft which we believe remains loved not just by aviation enthusiasts, but also by many of our customers. We have successfully managed our busiest ever summer flight schedule. We handle over six million individual uh, passengers, and we've completed the complex migration of a new IT system. Boy, do I hate that, uh, for checking across the whole of our system. We've announced a shift to buy on board catering for our short haul flights uh, in Europe, and we've begun a major streamlining effort of our back, of, back office uh, offices in London, primarily in London. This is not just about cost, this is really about making us feel better. Often people come to me, what's the cost target for this particular initiative? To which I say that's not the right question, is how are we going to become better by becoming more agile, by becoming more efficient, by making decisions faster. It's not just about cost, it's about culture change and doing things the right way according to the times that we live in. At the start of this month, with the support of our parent company, IAG, I was delighted to unveil our new business plan for the next five years. That plan is all about recognizing the competitive challenges we face and identifying ways to overcome them. So, we're changing the way we fly the world, changing the way we fly the world. That's the uh, words that we've decided to use internally. We're changing the way, the way we care for customers, and I'll come on to some of those changes in a moment. We're changing the way we manage our planes, investing in technology to make our operation more punctual and more resilient, and redesigning many processes to make our hub transfers the best in Europe. We are changing the way that we take on competition, first by making everyone in our company aware of that competition. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a minute. And then we're changing the way that we support our own people. Uh, because at the end, all of this is nice and fine, but unless, unless we dedicate time, effort, money, to bring this whole message and to work on this message and the mission of the company with everyone in BA, it's just not gonna work. So it is one of the four pillars that is driving our business plan. Now let's talk about customers here for a minute. Customers will be investing uh, we announced a couple of weeks ago $500 million in our Club World cabin, designed to make the BA business class product as exciting as any they are, uh, we have in the marketplace at the moment. And very much with the needs of the transatlantic uh, passengers in mind. Next year we'll be introducing as well the new generation Wi-Fi connection, and we should be done with that in most of our fleet by 2019, both short haul and long haul, both. We will be transforming the quality and the presentation of our food and drink uh, on board, including the expansion of the pre-order services to improve choice. We will make a step change in service through premium service training, and we're going to change the service routine to maximize the actual amount of sleeping time. We know sleep is important, particularly on the overnight flights leaving from the US into Europe, into the UK. We do offer more than 1,000 flat beds a day from New York to London. Uh, and we will be introducing better soft products over the uh, few weeks, next few weeks and months, including new bedding and new cabin ambience to create uh, the most helpful conditions for, again, this good quality sleep. Now, to further enhance our service for U.S. customers, today we are announcing an investment of $110 million in our lounges and customer facilities across the U.S., including $65 million for JFK's Terminal 7, which will be realized, built up, and equipped over the next two years. We will improve the customer journey at check-in, security, and boarding gates, and we will be fully refurbishing the first class and the club uh, lounges. We won't, spot, we won't stop there. We're also going to be investing in a new lounge at Boston, upgrading the lounges in San Francisco, Miami, Chicago, Houston, and Seattle. On the other side of the pond, this continues. We have a brand new lounge opening in Gatwick, finally early in the new year, in January. And at Heathrow, we'll be opening up a new first wing, which will take you straight into the lounge from check-in, which is uh, first uh, for us, the first in Heathrow. I'm also pleased to announce a new code share partnership with Alaska Airways today. Available for sale from today, BA customers can now book seats direct on BA.com on Alaska Airlines uh, seven destinations across the West Coast, including Santa Ana and uh, a number of destinations in Hawaii. This is a very welcome addition to our range of global partnerships. 
but I'm very pleased to emphasize that the daddy of them all, without a doubt, is our transatlantic joint business with American Airlines, Iberia, and Finnair. It is now in its sixth year in flourishing. About 260 flights take off each day as part of the joint business, within, which in North America has 31 gateways connecting 247 cities, and in Europe, 24 gateways connecting 155 cities. It is great aviation undertaking, and it really does continue to go from strength to strength. The joint business is one reason why the transatlantic market continues to be of huge importance to British Airways. And it is the market that continues to change. The Chapter 11 process that the US has gone through has given a massive boost to all the conditions that facilitated consolidation, consolidation itself, and the financial revitalization of the big three have enabled them to invest and expand across the Atlantic in a way that we've not seen from US major carriers for many, many years. I am delighted that my old and new colleagues at American Airlines have been able to strengthen and improve their products significantly on services between the UK and Europe. They're not alone, of course. And we are also seeing the advent of long haul, low cost in the market, with Norwegian seeking to expand their operations, WestJet offering low cost flights in Canada, and others connecting through uh, other airports. There is plenty of capacity out there. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Throw into that the mixed general economy uncertainty at the moment, and you can basically see the pressures in the market, especially at the premium end. That's why we're fighting back. We're changing the way we take on the competition. This is why our five-year plan puts renewed emphasis on our business cabin and why we are going to head head-to-head uh, -head with some of our competitors, particularly between London and the US. As I've mentioned uh, earlier, we've started flying from Gatwick to JFK here. In March, we'll launch from Gatwick to Oakland and next summer from Gatwick to Fort Lauderdale. Norwegian had been oper operating these routes as the only operator. Well, not anymore. We've seen that there is a demand there that needs to be addressed, and we believe that we can also serve that demand uh, efficiently. We will be changing the configuration of our Gatwick long-haul fleet to provide more seats in economy and premium economy so we can better serve the needs of that cost-conscious customer. Now, I refer to the general economic uncertainty we face and on both sides of the Atlantic. We are both in a period of some political uncertainty, too. In the UK, neither British Airways nor our parent company, IG, took sides in the debate on the membership of the European Union. We viewed it as a matter for individual voters. We analyzed the potential implications and we concluded that in the long term, the UK secession from the EU would not have a significant impact on our business. Of course, there have been effects in the short term, not unexpected, principally the depreciation of sterling. British Airways is very sterling based and IG reports in euros, so you begin to see a strong currency translation effect. The weaker pound also increased our dollar denominated costs including those for major items like fuel, aircraft, etc., and it's a lot of costs. The UK government has said it will start the formal process to leave the EU before the end of March. Following that, there will be a period of negotiation before the shape of the UK's future aviation relationships with the EU and the wider world becomes clear. For British Airways and IIG, our objective will be for the UK to maintain its full access to international aviation markets and to continue effective regulatory arrangements. The best and easiest way to do that is for the UK and for the EU to agree a comprehensive air transport agreement, or in other words, an open skies. And we would uh, want to see similar open skies agreements between the UK and all other markets where an EU agreement already exists, including, of course, the United States. The liberalized aviation regime we have had in recent years have has benefited airlines, without a doubt, and consumers and businesses in all sectors pretty much across our economies. We certainly do not want to go back to the days of highly restrictive regulation and limited competition. Following the referendum decision, it is more important than ever that the UK can develop its trading links with the US, so we hope that the incoming administration of President-elect Trump will seek to preserve stability in international aviation including, of course, the transatlantic airline alliances through a UK-US open skies deal. 
one of the consequences of the EU-US Open Skies deal was to open up the UK's hub, Heathrow, to many more transatlantic, transatlantic operations by any American or EU airline. Some critics maintain that this wasn't as radical as a change as it may have been because Heathrow was so congested and it was difficult for new entrants to obtain the slots to operate. Well, as we've seen, uh, the slots are obtainable if you want them bad enough. But the general point about lack of spare capacity at Heathrow has remained valid. So last month, not for the first time, the UK government gave, gave broad approval for a new runway to be built at the airport. Previous experience uh, tell us that there are really a lot of hurdles to be cleared before this runway plan can become a reality. Heathrow is a great European hub, but it is the most expensive one, and it faces increasing competition across the continent and beyond. We do not believe that a new runway can go ahead irrespective of the cost to the airline customers who use the airport. So for us, really, it's good news that the government, the UK government, has recognized that airport charges for customers must remain flat as this project proceeds. This has been endorsed by the UK Civil Aviation Authority, which regulates airport charges. We are at the start of a very long process with this runway plan, which will involve multiple stages. Here in the US, you probably won't need to follow every detail of every stage. It will be very boring. But given the story of runway schemes in the UK, uh, please be patient, very patient. Earlier, I mentioned some of the downsides of the Sterling's uh, recent depreciation. But for the US consumers, this is a huge upside. Huge. At the end of October, the pound was about 20% uh, cheaper than 12 months previously. So this is a fantastic time, can I say it again, a fantastic time to visit the UK and enjoy all the culture, all the attractions, and absolutely, yes, shopping opportunities that the country has to offer. You know, the UK is very much open for business, and it does offer a very warm welcome to all of its international visitors. More visitors come to Britain from the US than any other country apart from our nearest neighbor. And that's the trend we want to strengthen even farther. Of course, with exchange rates uh, where they are, the UK has been described as easily the best value luxury destination for global shoppers. Absolutely, I don't know how expert you are with handbags, but a survey of the, survey of the Wall Street Journal uh, last month showed that a Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 handbag cost the equivalent of $1,115 in China, $970 here, and $802 in London. So you just really got to buy a few of those and your ticket is paid for. <laughs> Conclusive evidence, I take it. Now, as an added incentive for those of you savvy travelers, on Black Friday, we're going to launch a really fantastic offer which we made public earlier uh, this morning or yesterday, of three nights free accommodation for 1,000 people booking flights for travel on selected dates in January, post Christmas. And thanks to Visit Britain, uh, these customers will also get a free Oyster card to travel uh, with 15 pounds credit to allow them to travel all around London at their leisure. So with the strength of the dollar, a fantastic offer, January sales, Really, honestly, there is not a better time to go and visit London at this time. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, let me reiterate that while it's an extremely tough, competitive world out there, we at British Airways have a plan for changing the way we fly the world. And we do mean it that we will, we will succeed. Whatever economic or political backgrounds we face, our relationship with the US and its people are immensely important to us, and they will continue to be so. And we want to be the vehicle for as many, as many US citizens to visit the UK as possible. It is truly, really a great privilege to be here with you today at this pre prestigious forum. Thank you very much. Alex, thank you. Great. And on behalf of the Wings Club Foundation membership on our board, I would like to present you with this plaque as a thank you for speaking with us. Uh, we'll take a Thanks. picture with uh, Chris. <laughs>